Hi folks, I'm Iggy with Lincoln Electric Cutting Systems, and today we're going to be walking you through the installation of the 4000 TC Pipe and Tube Cutter. Now, we've already unloaded the machine from the truck, so first step, we're going to unwrap the machine and then we'll remove the yellow foot braces before putting the machine into place. You'll notice I'm making the first cut on this side to avoid any wires. We're going to leave the other yellow brackets on the machine until after it's in its final location. Boom. We're almost ready to move the machine, but first we're going to go ahead and open up the box containing these cables. That way we can put them inside the machine. When moving the machine, make sure to fork from the indicated fork locations on the front. I didn't mention this before, but inside that box with those cables, there was a relay box and two cable harnesses. This is what allows you to control the 4000 TC through your 44 or 4800 controller. Let's go ahead and get it installed. Before we start unplugging or plugging in any cables to the controller, we made sure that the power was turned off. And as an added precaution, I'm gonna unplug the power cable from the back. So on the back of the box, you'll notice that it has some notches on the top and the bottom. This will slide into the channel and then rest on these bottom notches. So we have two cable harnesses here. We're gonna be concentrating on the one with the three round connectors. First, we'll go ahead and unplug the input cable and then find the input cable on our wiring harness from the relay box. So we'll go ahead and plug that into the back of the controller. We'll go ahead and be able to unplug the output line cable and then we'll be able to find the output line the cable that goes into the relay and we'll be able to unplug that. We will have top indicators there and then we'll be able to take the other output cable from the relay and plug that back into the back of the controller, like so. From here, we'll then be able to unplug all four motor cables. Then on that same cable harness from the relay, we'll be able to see the four motor cables, so we will plug them into the same labels on the box. Now, we'll grab the four motor cables that came out of the back of the controller, and we'll grab the other wiring harness and find the XYZU motor cables. From there, we can go ahead and find the corresponding motor cables from the box and go ahead and plug those in. The last four cables we'll be working with will be for our datum sensors and our arc initiated. If we look right above the AccuMove controller, we'll be able to see this four-way wiring harness. The three going over here will be for the datum, and this one right here will be for our arc initiated. We can go ahead and unplug that guy, plug him directly into the arc initiated cable, and then take the other three and go into here. Next, we're going to find the wiring harness from the 4000 TC that will connect to the relay box. We'll go ahead and connect that and screw that in until it stops. Then we'll go ahead and take the orange ohmic wire coming from the 4000 TC. You'll notice we have two connectors on there. We will then find the corresponding ohmic wires on top of the controller. We will disconnect these and plug them into the wires coming from the 4000 TC. Now that everything's hooked up back here, we can go ahead and put the power cable back into the back of the controller. After a little bit of cable management, we're then able to slide this to wherever we would like to put it. Once this is adjusted to where you want to have the box sit, there are going to be two Allens in there, and you'll use an eighth inch 
Allen wrench. You may not be able to see it in the video, but I promise they're up there. Now that we're done underneath the table, we're gonna go ahead and find the ground cable that's coming from the 4000 TC. We're gonna connect that to the star ground located at the end of the cable carrier rack on the 44 or 4800. We'll go ahead and take our 5 16 18 by half inch bolt and go ahead and attach it to our ground and then screw it in to the star ground. We're then able to take our half inch socket or if you don't have a socket, you can use a regular wrench. Either way works. And go ahead and tighten that down. Now, don't tighten it too far down. We don't want that to mess up any threads in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the yellow bracket that's securing the torch motor carriage in place. You're gonna need a half inch wrench and a 7 16 socket. This allows us to freely move the motor carriage away from the rotating chuck. Now that we've got this bracket removed, we can go around to the other side and remove the yellow brackets that are holding the cover in place. After removing those, this allows us to freely open and close the cover to load material. We can also go ahead and remove these static cling sheets from the cover itself. Okay, also packed with your machine, you're gonna find three sets of rollers. These are gonna be guides for the pipe itself to make sure that it stays straight. You'll notice that there are two sets of 532nd Allens and two 38 nuts on the back side of that. What we wanna do before we place these into the machine is just loosen these up a little bit so that we do have a little bit of slide back and forth, okay? At that point, our little V-groove will go closest to you, flat side will go away from you. Now I've already put the other two in and zeroed those out for a center line of the torch, so we'll just go ahead and do this very last one. We want to make sure it's top of torch is center line to pipe. We want to make sure that that's at the very end will make give us the most accuracy. And remember, we want that center line even, so we want to make sure that this side-to-side -side action is pushed all the way to one end. We can take our 3 8 wrench, go right underneath, and then go ahead and tighten one side first. And then once that's locked down, we can go ahead and do the opposite side. Also included in the machine is the key to your chuck. This allows you to open and close the jaws depending on material size. Right behind that is a rubber grommeted hole that will be able to hold that. Now let's go ahead and turn on the machine for the first time. Go ahead and start up your machine like you would a normal 44 or 4800. If your screen doesn't look exactly like this, go ahead and watch the video on how to update your VMD software. Once that's done, it's as easy as a push of a button in order to switch from plate mode to pipe mode. At that point, we can go ahead and datum either machine, and just like the 44 or 4800, your pipe cutter will find its zero location. Once that's done, you're able to jog it around just like your 44 or 4800. Now when we're ready to cut, all we have to do is switch out the torch leads and we're ready to go. And that's it, you're up and running in no time.